Rayquaza! I have Body came all the way from Little Root Town to finally find you in Sky Pillar. Now oh. it is time that I finally you. catch you Please step and make back. you mine. Oh. What the? Did you just shit? Uh, uh, oh. uh, Buddy? Buddy, are you okay? Uh oh. Rayquaza. Do I even need to say anything more? One of the most important legendary Pokemon in the franchise, and by far, a fan favorite to almost all Pokemon fans. But it wasn't until the third generation that this Pokemon got to see the light of day, and since then, there have been many changes to not only this Pokemon, but the Pokemon company as a whole. So sit back, relax, and let me teach you something you may not know about the master of the Weather Trio. Without further ado, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe, and let's take a detailed look into the origin of Rayquaza. In order to explain the origin of Rayquaza in the best manner possible, we will have to start at its debut. Rayquaza was first brought into the Pokemon franchise during the third generation, in the year 2003 with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. In these Pokemon games, Rayquaza was only available after defeating the Elite Four and could only be found at the top of Sky Pillar. For those of you that remember this event Pokemon, you remember the struggle of catching it, also saving right before the battle, but we'll get back to that in a second. Rayquaza instantly became a fan favorite and everyone wanted this legend in their party. Only two years after the release of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, Rayquaza finally hit the spotlight in the core series Pokemon expansion Emerald and was featured on the box art of this game. A fun fact about Pokemon Emerald is that you can actually catch Rayquaza prior to beating the Elite Four and it can be found once again in Sky Pillar at level 70. This gives you a tremendous advantage when going against the Elite Four because the highest Pokemon in the Elite Four caps out at around level 58, making it possible to Pretty much destroy the Elite Four with one Pokemon. But Pokemon Emerald is the only game that makes this a possibility. Exactly 12 years after Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire were released, the Pokemon Company kept up a similar trend and gave these games a breath of fresh air with the remakes Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Rayquaza could once again be found and captured at its event location in Sky Pillar, but there was one difference. Rayquaza was much, much easier to catch. Remember what I said about saving before you battled this Pokemon and having to set the game often? Well, in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, Rayquaza had a catch rate of only 3%, making him quite the beast and wallet stomper when it comes to catching this Pokemon. When it was reintroduced in the remakes Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, it was given a catch rate of 45%, which is the same catch rate as Pelipper, Chimeco, and Apom. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything more, you already know how I feel about that, so I'm gonna slap a card up top. Check it out if you want. Alright, enough about the games and what you already know. Let's talk about how Rayquaza actually came into existence in the Pokemon world. Arceus created the world hundreds of millions of years ago. With the creation of the world, Arceus also appointed certain Pokemon with attributes that were godlike in its image. For example, Arceus gave Pokemon like Groudon and Kyogre the powers to look over land and sea, while also giving Pokemon like Dialga and Palkia control over time and space. But it didn't stop there. With every legendary Pokemon, another one was created to protect and look over certain places. In this case, Rayquaza was given the role to solely protect the Pokemon world. Yeah, there's a reason why Arceus made Rayquaza look so badass. For millions of years, Rayquaza has been soaring around the atmosphere of the Pokemon world, living off meteorites and water particles, and Rayquaza also has a particular appetite for Minior, but we'll touch on that shortly. Rayquaza is constantly flying around the Pokemon world to eliminate foreign intruders or unknown objects from deep outer space, hence the reason why Rayquaza hates Deoxys. Like most legendary box art Pokemon, Rayquaza is actually part of a trio, and Rayquaza is even the master of this trio. The trio that we are talking about is known as the Weather Trio, and it includes Kyogre, Groudon, and of course, Rayquaza. This is the reason why Rayquaza always comes to the rescue when Kyogre and Groudon have battled in the past. Rayquaza is the only Pokemon that can maintain the balance and restore the peacefulness between these two. Because we do not know the exact time when the universe was created, it's hard to say how old Rayquaza truly is, and many
many people on Earth actually had no clue of its existence till only a few thousand years ago, during the Primal Age. During this age, the world was overflowing with natural energy. Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre fought over that energy in an endless clash. Because of their immense power, people could do nothing and thought the world was coming to an end. But Rayquaza intervened, and its power overwhelmed that of the two Primal Pokemon, and peace returned to the world. After this battle, everything seemed at peace, and eventually the battle from long ago was only something of myths and legends, until the timeline of Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. In this period, a meteorite hit the earth, causing cracks in the ground that unleashed natural energy. This energy made Groudon and Kyogre re-battle each other once again, but humans remembered the stories of the great battle from long ago, and how Rayquaza saved the world. Because of humans' wishes, and the combined power of the meteorite, Rayquaza Mega evolved for the first time ever, and it calmed the two from this epic battle. Something was learned from this epic battle, and it's the fact that Rayquaza is the only Pokemon ever to Mega Evolve without a Mega Stone. Because of this, the Devon Corporation has performed numerous tests to understand the anatomy of Rayquaza and why this is possible. Eventually, it was discovered that inside Rayquaza's body lies an organ that contains the same power as a Mega Stone. A Devon Corp scientist named this organ the Mikado Organ. What was learned about this organ was by consuming meteorites as Rayquaza flies through the stratosphere, the Mikado Organ actually filled with enough energy to enable Rayquaza to Mega Evolve. And speaking of Rayquaza eating meteors, it is said that when Rayquaza is passing through the Alola region, it often preys on its favorite snack, which is actually Minier. I bet you they taste like chocolate. Now, Rayquaza's origin derives from the Aztec god known as Quetzalcoatl. This ancient god was depicted as a flying serpent who would live in the boundary between the earth and the heavens. Quetzalcoatl was the ruler of air, and just like Rayquaza, it lived off of particles and dew that it would come in contact with from time to time. You really have to admire the way Pokemon creates their lore. I mean, it's all based off of ancient deities and Greek gods and mythology. It's super cool. Looking at Rayquaza, I know we instantly know he's a flying and dragon type, but he doesn't look like a dragon that we're used to. I mean, he's got absolutely no wings. At least here in America, we usually see dragon with wings, but Rayquaza is not based off of our type of dragon. It's actually based off of the East Asian dragons. In East Asia, dragons are depicted without wings and almost seem to levitate in midair. I feel like now that I just said that, you're getting a flashback of every time you've ever been to a Chinese restaurant. Remember the dragons? They've got no wings, buddy. They're floating. Before I jump into a new segment of these origin videos, I want to go over Rayquaza's stats because they are outrageous. On your screen right now are Rayquaza's stats, and you're probably not shocked at all considering this Pokemon is pretty much the uberest mon of all. Rayquaza's immense power gives it a place with only a handful of the best competitive Pokemon, and that's not even going into its Mega stats, which are actually so powerful that in Smogun's single battle rule set, Mega Rayquaza was almost instantly banned to a new tier created specifically for it called any thing goes because its power was like no Pokemon before it. So Rayquaza is pretty much the most badass Pokemon ever and Arceus really knew what he was doing when he appointed him to protect our world. Now I'm going to introduce a new segment of these origin videos where I actually give you guys my top 10 interesting facts that you may have been unaware of. I found these facts while doing my research so comment your favorite one down below. I'm sure one of these may be new to you. Number 1. Mega Rayquaza has the highest base attack and special attack stats and the highest base stat total of all dragon type and flying type Pokemon. Rayquaza's literally got it all. He is a badass. Number two. This one kind of goes hand in hand with the last one. Mega Rayquaza is the tallest mega evolved Pokemon and is also the tallest flying type Pokemon. Number 3. Rayquaza was the most voted on Pokemon in the 15th anniversary poll, which was a poll for the game mascots of the core series games, making it Japan's favorite mascot. I mean, that one speaks for itself. Number 4. In Pokemon Team Turbo, every time Rayquaza is mentioned in the dialogue, it is spelled incorrectly. The way they spelt it was R-A-Y-Q-A-Y-Z-A, -A, and it's supposed to be spelled R-A-Y-Q-U-A-Z-A. -A. I'll put them side to side, I mean, that's a little bit of an oversight, but I don't know which one is more interesting. The actual fact that they misspelled Rayquaza's name, or that there was an actual Pokemon game called Team Turbo. Number 5. Mega Rayquaza is tied with Mewtwo's Mega Evolution for the highest base stat total of all Pokemon, with 780, and that is excluding non-playable Eternamax Eternatus. Wow, I've never said that. Eternamax Eternatus. That rolls right off the tongue. Number 6. Rayquaza was designed by Hironobu Yashida. I hope I pronounced that right. He also created Wobbuffet, Dunsparce, Celebi, Deoxys, Magmortar, and Darkrai. You, my friend, have a way with art. And I mean, that's like three of my favorite designs. 
designs right there. So thank you, my friend. Number seven, Rayquaza is the only Pokemon that can hold an item other than a Z Crystal while Mega Evolved. This is because of that organ that the Devon Corporation scientists found out about. I mean, is there anything this Pokemon can't do? I think Pokemon went balls to the wall with this guy. Number eight, in the Pokemon of the Year poll held by the Pokemon Company in 2020, Rayquaza was voted the most popular Generation 3 Pokemon, receiving 60,939 votes. It was also the eighth most popular Pokemon overall, and I think that's well deserved. Number 9. Rayquaza is also based off of the Lindworm, which is a legendary serpent-like dragon often seen in heraldry across the United Kingdom. And last but not least, number 10. Rayquaza's Makita organ refers to the Makita Emperor, another name for the Emperor of Japan, and can also be translated as King of the Heavens and Sky. Well, my friends, there you have it. That was the origin of Rayquaza. And if I had to add one interesting fact myself, it's the fact that nobody can pronounce his name properly and no Nobody cares. It's the only Pokemon you'll truly get away with. As always, Pokemon fans, thank you, my friends, for watching. Don't forget to check out some of my origin videos. And like always, take it easy and peace out. <laughs>